Hey guys, what's going on? Joe's your boy, George McKay, the one and only George McKay, the man who brings you the MLW Rewind every single week, whether it's on time or late, you know, that's how we do, but I don't do it alone. I do it with my PIC in podcasting and in friendship, Uncle Bobby B. What's up? What's up? What's going on? How you doing? I'm doing good. So a couple of things that we got to talk about before we get into the rewind. Uh, and this one will obviously not be a watch along. And it's also three days after the episode premiered. So if you've already watched it, you know what we're going to talk about. But if you want to hear our thoughts, you're tuning in. While you're tuning in, hit that subscribe button because we're at 523. So, uh, you know, the quicker we get to 750, the quicker Uncle Bobby B gets 5150 on the show. So, oh, and shout out, speaking of 5150, shout out to Julius Smokes. Followed me on Twitter. Love that dude. He's the one and only hype man of all hype men when it comes to wrestling factions. Julius Smokes, all kinds of fire. So thank you for the follow. I'm honored and privileged to know that we are following each other on Twitter. Now, uh, major breaking news that was released just after this MLW episode. Lance Anoy. I hope I'm saying that right. Anoy? Anoy. Yeah. Anoy. He uh, has signed with MLW. This is the grandson of the legendary one half of the Wild Samoans, Samu. And uh, he shares that Anoy and uh, Fatu bloodline. So obviously a relation to probably Jacob Fatu, relation to Roman Reigns and Rock. And they're all kind of cousins mixed in between. So, you know, shout out to that. Can't wait to see what another member of the uh, that Samoan heritage brings to the MLW roster. I'm excited about this one. What are your thoughts on this uh, latest signing? Should be interesting. I, I like this play that they're doing here. They've got Juicy Finau. They've got... Jacob Fatu, now they're bringing in Lance and Noai. They're starting like a little Samoan thing. You know, I've heard the Samoan SWAT team is coming back. Uh, so this this should be uh, this should be interesting. I'm I'm down for this. Let's see absolutely. what happens. Absolutely. I, I would not mind seeing the Samoan SWAT machine coming back for sure. 150%. That would be exciting to see what uh, this new generation of Samoan talent brings to that faction. Uh, oh, yeah. Wolf action, but it's a faction nonetheless. And another couple pieces of information. Uh, if you watch the episode, you saw a couple of the announcements. Jacob Fatu in the Battle Royal. Just an uh, email sent a couple days ago, I think either last night. EJ and Duca has now entered in the Battle Royal. Uh, Battle Riot. Sorry, not Battle Royal. Battle Riot. So we got a lot of big names in Battle Riot. Killer, uh, uh, Killer Cross is in Battle Riot now. There's a lot of big names. So looking at everyone that's kind of made their attentions known for Battle Riot and knowing that... Uh, Hammer and Richard is boom. It's in the crosshairs. It's coming very quickly. Uh, who would you see as the logical next winner of Battle Riot? If you could put your money on anybody right now, and I know it, literally it is anybody's game, but if you could, I mean, we are going to do it as it gets closer. We're going to do a prediction on that for sure. But as it stands right now, Uncle Bobby B, who do you got your eyes on to take this year's uh, Battle Riot? Well, I mean, if it's if it's not Richard Holiday then I'm going to say Mads Kruger. It's not going to be Richard Holiday because Richard Holiday is facing Alex Hammer. Sorry, Derp. Uh, <clears throat> it's going to be Mads Kruger because it's not going to be Richard Holiday. So you think the next logical winner of this year's Battle Riot is going to be Mads Kruger? Yeah, but I also don't think that Richard is going to uh, necessarily take the title off of hammer at this time so you, do you think richard if he doesn't take the title off hammer at this time he might throw his hat in the ring for battle riot as well i don't think he i don't think he can do both but i don't know i don't see why they've done that they've done that in other promotions where the champion has dropped the title or lost the match and then entered the royal rumble if you will from another promotion yeah, well, it's possible I mean, it could I mean, happen this, this is 40 men and so far i think we only know about 15 to 20 of who's going to be in this. And there's obviously going to be some surprises, uh, but, you know, probably some New York legends will be, uh, you know, appearing in this, much like they did when they had Battle Riot in Philly. We saw guys like the Blue Meanie show up, ECW, you know, OGs. So there's definitely going to be a couple surprises, local, local surprises, like local. And I mean, New York and Philly aren't that, that far away. So um, wouldn't hurt to bring in some of those Philly, Philly guys again. Absolutely. Well, Philly's favorite son, Bud Heavy, he's made his intentions known. He's also entering Battle Riot. Uh, I see Bud Heavy, depending on where his number falls, uh, you know, probably putting up a decent choice for sure, but I, I, I'm not going to put my money on Bud Heavy. But hey, anybody that does, all the power to you. We love Bud. We do. He's entertaining as hell, but I just don't see Bud Heavy being that main event guy. No, no, no shots, no nothing, no heat. Just being honest. I love Bud. He's just. I don't know. He's not 
he's not somebody I, I, I could see carrying a promotion on his back. That's just my thoughts, my two cents. I could see him carrying like three cases of beer on his back easily. Uh, you're I like Bud man. Heavy. You're insulting the man. I see four, two on each shoulder, man. Easy. You're insulting him saying he can only take three. Come on. I, I, I like Bud Heavy. I think Bud Heavy's one of those guys. It's just like, yeah, man, I'm happy to be here. Let's go out and fucking wrestle and whatever happens. I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, just I'm happy to be professionally wrestling. So good, good for Bud. I like that guy. Absolutely. Shout out to Bud Heavy. So let, let's. I, I I would love to see Bud just like be a be a sleeper and and go deep in that in that uh, battle riot. You know what? I'll give you. Uh, I, I agree with you on that. I can see Bud Heavy if they did want to push Bud Heavy a little bit. I could see him getting final five, maybe final four. But beyond that, I don't. I don't see him sticking around too much longer. What, yeah, but like I'm saying, have Bud go in and be like that guy that just lasts way longer than you expect him to. Maybe gets an elimination or two that you really didn't expect, and just kind of like you're really rooting for him, but you know he's going out sooner or later. And that, like that would be a good. That's a good guy to do that spot with. You know what I mean? Because the fans get behind Bud because everybody likes Bud. Maybe get Gnarls in there and they do a little double teaming on people and just kind of get the crowd behind them. Like, I think they should be pushing those two guys as, as a tag team personally, but I hey. do as well. Uh, Cause that we've, we've talked about this to no end that the tag team division in MLW is very thin at best. Uh, there's only really three teams, four teams that are a consistent hunt, if you will. And once they lost uh, team filthy, there was one tag team out the window. Uh, so there is definitely room to bring some more tag teams in. And I wouldn't mind even seeing some of the Luchas. Uh, I love the trios matches, but I would not mind seeing some of the Lucha teams uh, tag it up. I think tagging, uh, throwing those guys in the mix would be fantastic. And, and, and let's not forget the loss of Los Parks. There's another tag team that's gone. So, I mean, really, you've got what? 5150, Hustle and, and uh, Power. You've and the Von Erics. got the Von Erics. And who else is like a like a dedicated tag team? Uh, right now, there's uh, Gang Grills kind of faction, if you will, that they yeah. Up. But yeah, again, those are more trio style. Uh, you had a tag team with uh, TJP and Buku Dao, but obviously that imploded a year and a half ago now. And and then what happens is because MLW again, they've only got an hour hour show per week, so they're fitting in like usually a lucha match in the beginning and and two two singles or a t and the singles or a tag after that. You know, it, it's it, the pattern is kind of like lucha tag singles or lucha singles tag. Right. Generally, when there's for, not a lucha, there's usually a woman's match here or there. Speaking of which, we got to get into that too as well. Featherweight division. We'll talk about it later on, but let's get through the yeah. rewind, if you will. But sorry, you had a point. I cut you off. No, I was I was just gonna say. Then you get you start having to make tag teams where you're just like, okay, we don't really have anything for this person right now. We don't have anything for this person right now. Let's put them in a tag team, and that's okay. Like you could say that that's kind of what happened to Hustle and, and Power. But I like that, that this push that they're getting because there's been a lot of tag teams where it's just been like this guy and this guy together, but they ended up being good. But like, I think they need like a little more depth in that tag division. And you've already got two ready made guys right there with Bud and Gnarls and push them as 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 faces and they'll get the, the fans behind them 100 percent. Sorry Absolutely. to cut a bunch of time there, but yeah. I have a thought, you know. No, that's fine. Go with it. Go with it. All right. Let's get into this week's rewind. So this week's rewind, in my opinion, started off epically epically okay when microman and saint laurent enter in on i believe what he called the micro bike the micro the micro -mobile. The mobile it was everything i needed at that moment in time and it brought joy to my face seeing the fans lining up waiting for microman saint laurent and him coming in like they like they like they're carrying a whole flock of just amazingness behind them. But then it's short-lived. It really is short-lived because St. Laurent is handed a piece of paper right as he's parking the bike and announcing Microman saying that, listen, it's a note from CD himself. If Microman loses tonight, he's out. He's out of MLW, period. And when you're talking about the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in MLW, that's not, that's not an easy task because he's going into trios match. And he's got to rely on two other men to hope that he could stay in MLW. So a look of concern on St. Laurent's face, but Microman not faced. He was eating Cheetos. He was just... No, no, there were Reese's. There were many Reese's cups, and I was dying because I'm like, what's this motherfucker eating? It was the, the package was cut off, 
cleanly at the top with scissors. You could tell he was just sitting there munching those many Reese's peanut butter cups. And that was the funniest shit to me. I really didn't pay too much attention to the package. It looked like a Cheetos package to me. It did. It did. That's what I thought. And I'm like, wow, that's kind of stereotypical. Motherfuckers eating like Doritos or something or like some Cheetos. Nope. Many Reese's pieces. Well, and again, he didn't look phased. He looked like he saw St. Laurent read the note and he just kept popping. He kept kept eating. So Micro Man, ladies and gentlemen, not phased by this pretty much ultimatum laid out by CD in the early uh, goings of this week's MLW. Now, obviously, it's not a surprise because CD had a lot on his plate. He was going one-on-one with the current reigning defending MLW heavyweight champion. That's right. Cesar Durant from the previous episode put himself in a main event world title shot and we'll get through the hilarity that was uh his preparing for this match throughout the entire episode which i thought to be comedic gold cd is not really that funny too often but this week cd was his comedy was on fucking point now to start off we kick off with this rare singles match from 5150 that's right danny danny limelight danny rivera whatever you want to go by Danny limelight rivera is how they build them for this match thank you that's how they build them for this match so he's coming out and he's not alone obviously he's coming out with julius smokes julius smokes always there hyping wearing a texas flag like a cape and i thought they were gonna maybe change the guard a little bit i thought they were gonna go face for this one uh but no danny very quickly telling the crowd to shut up because everybody's breath smells like cow manure uh i thought he was gonna say shit because that's what they do on lw they usually have free reign with certain swear words, if you will. But no, he kept it clean. He said cow manure. And uh, he actually cut a really great line on Davey. Uh, Davey Richards, who he's facing in this match. Uh, Davey, you're no wolf. You're an old dog. And I'm about to put you out of your misery. Uh, just just a great line. Uh, Davey comes out. Davey looks great. Uh, they have a great match. Danny had some great spots. But Danny, what, what impressed me about this match, and Danny always impressed me. But what impressed me from Danny in this match was his selling. He really sold the punches and the kicks and everything that Davey was throwing at him. And you know Davey Richards can hit you and it can hurt. But Danny sold it to the point where I really felt like he was in trouble. And this match was great. Danny had a couple opportunities where I thought he might steal it. But of course, the face gets over. Uh, Davey Richards wins. Uh, But Danny Limelight, tip of the hat off, as always, to 5150. Great selling. Great storytelling. Danny Limelight, in my opinion, carried Davey Richards in this match. Usually Davey carries people. Danny carried Davey. That's my uh, honest opinion. I, I really enjoyed this match. Like, I, I think people forget, like, because Danny's kind of gimmick is more like street guy, kind of that cocky. Puerto Rican swagger. Cocky, cocky. But he backs it up. But he like, backs it up. He does you, you, like this dude was a fucking marine and like i don't know if you know this but th- they don't just let anybody in the marines like you got to be a pretty much a certified badass to be a marine like danny can fucking fight danny can go and this guy's a tremendous talent he's a, a good fucking human being from everything i understand he's athletic he's talented and his timing and selling like you said is selling especially but like his timing with Davey is what makes everything look good timing is what makes moves look good your opponent makes your moves look good not necessarily you and Danny made everything Davey hit him with look exceptionally well his timing everything was on point uh this dude is a tremendous talent and I'm genuinely surprised like the big boys haven't come in for him yet honestly I would Absolutely. snap this guy. If I, if I was running a wrestling promotion, like I would snap Danny Limelight up in a fucking heartbeat singles or tag. I would put him in either one. We sound like broken records because we're big fans of, of Danny and, and uh, uh, Jesus Slice. Christ. Slice, thank you. And, and uh, Julius and Homicide. So, you know, we say it a lot, but, but it's true. These dudes are just fantastic, top of their game. Can't get enough of it. Absolutely. One of the, the best selling points, if you haven't watched the episode, please go back and watch it. But one of the best selling points is... Uh, Davey did kind of a makeshift pile driver on the fly. And when Danny sold it, he went straight up. But he didn't go straight up and just flop. He went straight up and held it there for a good three to five seconds, I want to say. And then he flopped. That is It was beautiful. That is agility at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, to hold that position for five seconds like you just got dazed. And then to flop over, but not just flop over on your side. Flop over straight. Like a tree falling in the forest. Uh, Danny Danny flop that shit. Yeah, Danny Limelight is a fucking talent. Uh, and then Davey Richards cuts a rare promo. Uh, he's out there with Rich after the match. And he says, uh, you know, 
Losing a hammer reignited the fire. It showed him that he couldn't be complacent. He had to stay strong. He had to stay hungry. So in the words of Goldberg, he wants his gold. And guess what? Alex Kane, the suplex assassin, according to Davey Richards, you're next. And the hunt is on. So Alex Kane so, better have his head on a swivel because now the American Wolf is coming for that open weight title. And we, we talked about this in the past, like what's what's going to be next for D.B. Richards and MLW. Well, now he's made it clear he's coming after that open weight title. Um, Alex Kane has had a pretty good run as open weight champion as, as he goes on. But I think if there's going to be somebody he's come up against so far, that is going to be his toughest test of all. It's going to be Davy Richards. And it, as much as I love Alex Kane, he's a great talent. Davy Richards has a very good chance of, of taking that title. So Alex has to be on point for the next little while. And uh, Mr. Thompson better get some sort of blunt object to use. Well, they do have needed. that. That Boumaye gym bag. That oh, they yeah. That, that, the that They do have a blunt object. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, it's whatever is in Mr. Thomas's bag of tricks. Now, speaking of Alex Kane, uh, you know, shout out to that because he is almost very close. In fact, I believe he won the open weight title last July or last August. So if he does get through Davey Richards, he's creeping up on a year as the open weight champion. And I know a lot of people will be like, well, that's not really impressive. Uh, you know, he, he hasn't defended it too often. But look at who held it before him. I mean, Hammer was the open weight champion for close to three years. Mind you, one of those years was a pandemic year, but Alex really didn't defend it that much either. So say what you want to say, but first championship run out the gate and he holds it for, as we stand right now, close to a year. Uh, tip of the hat to the suplex assassin, man, because that's not easy to do in any promotion, but good for him. And he's excelled. If you look at Alex from when he debuted at last year's Battle Riot to where he's come now, Alex Kane is now one of the cornerstones of MLW that they will continue to build around, much like 5150. Uh, you know, don't get me wrong. Richard, Hammer, the Vaughn Ericks, those guys are all at the peaks of the mountaintops when it comes to MLW now. But if you look at the future, you look at Danny, you look at Slice, you look at Alex, you look at Calvin, you look at EJ, the future that they're building in MLW beyond... And we thought, we thought for a long time they were going to take a hit losing Tom Lawler. Once Filthy Tom left and Team Filthy left, I was like, fuck, man, who's going to pick up the slack? Well, you know what? I was a big fan of, of Tom Lawler, but I haven't missed him. Up until this moment, I haven't really thought well, about you, him. You know what? Um, Hammer uh, would have seen Tom Lawler yesterday because they were both working that show. Uh, Lawler actually worked Josh Alexander. And I'm not sure who Hammer worked, but Hammer well, took a spill yesterday ramp. and sent you that he video. He worked the ramp. He, he worked the ramp. <laughs> Hammer, but good recovery. Like, you got to love it because he got up and laughed at himself because he was like, that was great. But he just face planted coming out. Shout out to Lindsay for sending me that video. But, oh, my God, that was that was amazing. Uh, so, yeah. It, it's, check, the, uh, but, check the Straight Talk socials because I will post that video for all. And I'll make sure to give Lindsay some credit so they can see how great Hammer well, recovered. I have to get Lindsay's permission first. I don't know if she wants even credit or even wants it posted, but I sent okay. it to Hammer anyways. <laughs> but uh, I said, she's too shy to send this to you. So I'm just going to send it to you because it's a great angle and you're probably going to want to post it. Well, I, I, uh, I got to post it. If he doesn't post it, I got to post it. It's amazing. So the, the, the thing about MLW is when you don't have a huge roster and you don't have a ton of money to spend and you have some people that are on like not necessarily full-time or exclusive deal. I don't think anyone's exclusive necessarily, but on full-time deals, you still have to have a core group that your fans know. I'm always going to be able to see Calvin Tankman or Davey Richards or Alex Hammerstone because I know they are signed there. They are going to be there as part of the show and not necessarily brought in as one-offs here or there. And as you pointed out, MLW has a really good group and really good balance of young up and coming guys, guys who are just kind of at the peak of their career and guys who are starting to move into that veteran area too. So I, I think it's, it's a really good balance of talent. They have a good roster and, and they're well set up for the future. Let's hope they can get a, a really solid TV deal and get more, uh, more content out to the masses. Cause we want more MLW. I could deal with, with two one hour shows a week. I Absolutely. Could. Or even, you know, or one, two hour show, one, two hour show, even give me a, you know what? It, it wouldn't be a bad thing to do a one hour show that all the fans can see. And then if you upgrade to like the premium on YouTube, if you will, 
you get maybe some dark matches, maybe a featherweight match and stuff like that. Before we get into uh, the featherweight stuff, which we'll get into the end of the episode, but uh, we also got uh, uh, so these are the start of the greatness that is Caesar Durant. Uh, we get a we get a little vignette kind of recapping the feud between Hammer and CD as to how we got to our main event tonight, and then right after that. Their, their cameraman is heading towards CD's office and Max Kruger like bursts out the door, kicks it, comes this close to actually kicking the cameraman off his fucking feet, to be honest. Kruger, I think, you know, you can slow down on the intensity with the doors, my friend. MLW is replacing a lot of doors in a lot of venues and it's and it's Max Kruger's fault. You guys man. must spend a fortune on doors, man. Fucking a ton of fortune. And, and, you know, these are not cheap doors, ladies and gentlemen. These are rusted warehouses. No, no that wasn't the veneer. That was like a, that wasn't like a cardboard interior. That, no, that was, was a solid door. Solid fucking door. And, and Max Kruger just treating those doors with disrespect no wonder core bauer can't afford to pay anybody too much he's got to replace all these fucking those doors. doors like yeah, beating those doors like they owe him money yeah absolutely absolutely and then we get a commercial break that we typically do with mlw where they want to sell their merchandise when we come back from the commercial breakdown and caesar durant is doing yo hold on karate. pause did you just say commercial breakdown well no i said we come from that the is commercial a commercial break oh i thought you said commercial breakdown i was like I actually love that. I'm going to start saying that. I said commercial break, commercial breakdown. That sounds way better. Well, Anyways, it technically continue. was a breakdown because they're trying to sell their merchandise. So can I get back in my flow? You interrupted No, me. but I liked it. It wasn't, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I thought that was a cool phrase and I, I enjoyed it. I want right, to utilize fine, that. Fine. We'll, we'll, we'll put it in. This is what I do. I add color. Okay, motherfucker. Come on. You put it in Work with play me now. here. We come back from the commercial breakdown of selling merchandise on MLW shop. Okay. CD is doing karate in his office. He's preparing. He's got a couple of his minions holding boards around the office, kind of like he's going to punch this one, kick this one, back elbow fist this one. But he doesn't get a chance to show his skills because the Von Erics interrupt him. The Von Erics are pretty much saying that they deserve the title shot. They've been asking for it. And if CD keeps trying to avoid them or give them an answer, there's going to be, you know, hell to pay. And as CD says, I'm training, get out. The Von Eric show him what a Texas strong fist looks like as they literally punch through two of the boards as they walk out. And when they do, they actually knock one of the minions off his feet. And as they leave, CD swears at them and then tells us, get up, get up. <laughs> so the, the, uh, the comedy of Caesar Durant uh, is a joy to watch when he's on point like this. What did you think of the CD karate six uh, karate uh, uh, sequence, if you will, before we get into the six man action? loved it and and like you said like cd the the man's an actor okay he's a Derek cuarto he's an he's an actor and his comedic delivery and timing he's one of those guys his character is not meant to be funny but it is and he's dropped over over the last like months of episodes like some fucking hilarious just little comments one-liners non-fungible token fungus what do i buy want to buy fungus like like it, it, he's and I'm not sure if he ad libs those or like they're written or he writes them or what, but he's great, man. Like that guy just adds a lot to the brand and the show. So that's a, that's a master stroke having that guy. So I, I loved this whole little segment and sequence. And I thought given CD a little more latitude to be funny, uh, fucking works. Absolutely, it does. Now we get six man action. We got uh, a rare uh, trios team, if you will, of TJP, uh, Mini Abysbo, and Eris. Uh, they were coming out with uh, Hall of Dead, Dr. Dax, uh, at ringside. And um, they're versing Aerostar, obviously Microman, and El Dragon. Now, um, I, I got to say, what made this match for, for me was near the end of the match, Microman was in the ring with all three of the heel trios. And all three of these guys, go back and watch the genius that is the storytelling of this match. And I'll, I'll explain this why. And if you don't believe me, go back and watch, then come back and re-listen to what I have to say now. Three men in unison standing across the ring from Microman. He turns around and kind of makes like a grunt or a growl, scary face. They walk over to him in perfect formation, then step back in perfect formation. And they this unison sequence that they did was both hilarious and genius at the same time. And TJP took really good care of Microman, as did Mini Abismo and Erez. They always do. Uh, Microman looked very strong in this match, stronger than I believe he has in any other trios match that we've watched. And that's, again, to the credit of TJP. And I know the Rewind faithful are going to be like, oh, he's going on a TJP chant. Listen, I speak the truth. I say what I have to say. TJP is a fucking talent. And if anybody doesn't realize that, turn me off right now and I don't give a fuck. 
If I'll, I'll rather lose subscribers than Look, not be able to speak my piece. You, you may not, you may not like TJP, but you can't deny TJP is a phenomenal fucking talent. And I'm like, I like TJP. I don't know. Maybe people don't like him, but that's, that's cool. But you can't deny the dude's talented. You can't deny he's a phenomenal wrestler. Like that's all. Absolutely. Absolutely. But this, this whole unison sequence that they did was amazing. Uh, the mind games TJP did with Microman calling him in, but then tagging out was great. And uh, you know, uh, even St. Laurent on commentary uh, was uh, a kind of a resurgence of a couple years ago when he was on commentary with Rich. I saw that kind of revive again, which was great. Um, and then we get a win. And Microman is staying in MLW, thank God. So Microman's team pulls through. They knock off the uh, the heel uh, trios of TJP, Mini Abismo, and Eras. But this was a great match. And just go back and, like I said, even if you don't want to watch the whole thing, if you're not a big MLW fan, watch the last five minutes of this match and tell me that what I just said is complete bullshit. And that's your opinion. That's fine. But go back and watch it and then re listen to what I just said. Your and, opinion, but it's wrong. Well, <laughs> it will be wrong in this particular sequence. You're entitled to your opinion, but sometimes opinions can be wrong. I have wrong opinions all the time. Yeah. You know, me too. I start. I started this Absolutely. show with one person who I thought was going to be good, and now I have another person who's better. So you know, sometimes opinions are wrong, right? It's true. Yeah, there yeah, it is. True. There Jesus, is. fuck, you guys, taking shots, poor Lewis. I'm not taking shots, Lewis. I'm just speaking the truth. <laughs> fuck. It. Okay, so uh, we got a win. Microman is staying in MLW. This was a cool match. Nice to see TJP uh, working with the Luchadors. Uh, I enjoyed this. I always love the Lucha. I, like, I look forward to, okay, I know I'm getting a Lucha six-man scramble or whatever, uh, MLW this week, which we, we tend to get, like, at least at least once every three episodes, we're getting a, a six-man or a tag Lucha match or something like that, which I enjoy. I, like I said, it's, it's not that it's become formulaic, but you kind of expect a Lucha match, segments, maybe a women's or a singles match, and then, like, a tag or a singles match after between some segments, and I'm fine with that. I know what I'm getting and I like what I'm getting and it's concise in one hour and I get a lot of entertainment in that hour. So I love these matches. Keep them coming boys. And uh, let's move right along. Absolutely. And uh, we get another, again, CD vignette. He's still training, but this time he's interrupted by Jacob Fatu, who cuts just a fire promo in under 15 seconds and leaps pretty much says, you tried to fuck with me. You couldn't fuck with me. You keep fucking with me and I'm going to fuck you up. And then he just leaves, <laughs> and it's, it's, ah, oh, it's, it, there's nothing else to say. You tried to fuck with me, you couldn't fuck with me, you keep fucking with me, and I'm going to fuck you up. It, it's so perfect that there's nothing else I need to say. We're going to move right along. And we're going to move right along into the main event. That's right, main event time. We get CD coming out with his minions, uh, a chair, all kinds of things. Hammer comes out. And Hammer is ready to go. And CD says, you know, hold on a second. Hold on a second. You're so tough. You're so awesome. You're the champ. If you think you're so tough, then you can beat me with one arm tied behind your back. And Hammer actually does tie one arm behind his back. And at that There's exact no moment, the club couple, Alicia and Richard, Walk into the ring. Richard Holitude. cuts. Sorry? Holitude. So the cloud couple walks into the ring. Richard cuts a promo. And uh, then he begins to attack Hammer. And at that point, Kruger comes out. Muertes comes out. And it's a full-on beatdown. It's CD, Richard, Kruger, Muertes all coming out. And I'm wondering who's going to come out to save Hammer. Who is going to align with Hammer? Well, wouldn't you know what? I thought it might be Jacob for two, but it was not. And I understand the reasons why. But it was, however, the Von Erics. The first guys okay. to interrupt CD tonight and tell him that they better give him what he wants or there will be repercussions. Well, I guess these are the repercussions. They come to Hammer's rescue. They clear the ring. And CD, as he's walking away kind of with everybody, kind of swarming around the ring, says next week we're going to get a trios match. That's right. We're going to get Richard Holiday, King Muertes, Mads Kruger, versus Alex Hammerstone and the Vaughn Eriks. And that is going to happen next week. And oh, baby, what a way to end it. Also, right before the end, the camera pans over to Richard and Alicia. 
as they aggressively suck face. I'm not saying that, Rob. I'm not saying it. The cloud couple aggressively sucks face as the camera goes off air. And that's how this episode of MLW ends. It was another great one. We knew that CD wasn't going to be able to beat Hammer for the title, but now we understand the the the, the play. The play was to get that trios match. You know, sorry, go ahead. The, the 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 point was to get the trios match in play to also have Richard get a little bit more time, a little bit more headspace in Hammerstone's uh, mind. So this was a perfect layout and a great continuating build to the story. And I loved it, uh, all except the aggressive sucking face. If you're going to passionately make out, and I get how hot you two are for each other, <laughs> just calm it down a little. Part of the gimmick, bro. I No, I get it, but it's... But I, I, I mean, guess I guess watching Hammer get beat down week after week makes them very, very, very <laughs> hot and heavy for one another. I don't know. I'm hot just throwing and heavy. I, I uh, can't believe Hammer fell for, for the dirty tricks of... Uh, cd well what other option did but, he have what other option did he have he didn't have many uh, you know what i thought the match was going to be like do you remember like wcw versus nwo revenge yes i do i remember you could pick bischoff but all he could do was like karate kicks and shit and yeah. chops and stuff like he couldn't do like moves i'm like oh this is going to be like playing with eric bischoff in, in wcw like cd is going to do some kicks and shit and hammer's just going to demolish him but no, we didn't even get a match. It was just a beat down story build, and that's well, okay. We did get one kind of thing when CD attempted to hit Hammer with the chair, but he missed it by about five feet. Yeah, <laughs> we got that. <laughs> Couldn't hit the broad side of a barn, bro. But yeah, it, it was a story build, and I'm fine with that. Um, y- y- all likelihood is that there's going to be some way for Richard to weasel his way and take that title, and I'm down with that. Let's see oh, what happens. Absolutely. And as am I. Listen, uh, Richard Holiday heel is the best Richard Holiday. When Richard Holiday was trying to be a face, uh, it was a little bit hard to stomach because you just know that's not who he is truthfully. So to see him uh, in his truest form now, but also the allegiance with Cesar Durant and you got King Muertes, Mads Kruger still also aligned with CD. The odds are definitely stacking up against Hammer. Week to week, we're seeing more and more that Hammer's going to have to put up with. So when eventually we do get the match that we know is coming very soon, when we do get Holiday versus Hammer, it's not going to be Holiday versus Hammer. It's going to be Hammer versus Holiday versus Alicia versus whatever CD or how CD chooses to get involved in that match and who he decides to involve in that match. And it's a, and but- it's it's unfortunate. The only reason I say that, it's, it's unfortunate because I honestly and truly believe that if it was Richard, versus hammer one-on-one i do believe richard could pull it out yeah he could i'll say that he could but it's not now it's not going to be hammer against richard and cd and mads and because i think it's going to be hammer and the von erics and possibly even jacob fatu i don't think there's any love loss between hammer and fatu but i think there's a mutual respect there fatu knows he got beat and he got beat by hammer with a bum ankle so I think if it comes down to it, Fatu's hatred for what CD did to him will override his, you know, kind of animosity towards Hammerstone. So I think you could even see Jacob Fatu come in and make a play against uh, CD in, and get involved in that match and help Alexander Hammerstone. You could, but it also could be a help with the means to an end because if anybody's going to beat Hammer yeah, yeah. for that title, it's going to be Fatu. He's going to want his payback. So I could see that. I could see that. But that was, ladies and gentlemen, that was this week's uh, MLW. That's our rewind. Before we go, though, a couple more topics I do want to touch on because I think we've had a, a great back and forth today and a lot of topics. We don't really do that too often on the show, which I think we should start doing more. Uh, let us know below if you like uh, like what we're doing. But uh, featherweight division, where do we go from here? We haven't seen it in weeks. How do we build it? I've got an idea, but what are your thoughts on this? How do we get back into building the featherweight into a bi-weekly appearance on mlw because you talked they talked a lot about last year bringing in his featherweight division wanting to showcase the women we saw it for a little bit then it disappeared in the new year we haven't seen it too often this year so how do we make it more of a norm in mlw to get this division that was promised to us i i think what's needed if i'm being honest is they've got to start stretching the show to an hour and a half that extra half hour is going to give you that time for at least one more match and some more segments or make your matches a little longer. 
And that's going to give you that time to give the featherweight d- division the uh, attention that they deserve. It kind of started, but we're like you said, it's been stagnant. We haven't seen a lot of movement there. Uh, you know, Taya coming in, okay, but like we need to see a little, little more action there. Uh, and and I, it's hard to do when you've only got an hour and you've got heavyweight, open weight, tag team titles, and now you're bringing in a featherweight title, and that's four. So four titles, one hour. And not every match has to be a title match. You've got other people who are non-title contenders that need match time too. It's time. It's time to 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 bump it up to to an hour and a half. I think that's my solution. I I wouldn't say you're wrong. My solution is making it bi-weekly, and this is how I see doing it because they've introduced this trios formula a little bit more often, which much like they were doing in AEW. I think they're going to follow suit in that way of introducing a trios title, which I think is fantastic because that gives a couple more other spotlights to it. So I'm what I'm suggesting is add the titles, featherweight, we know what's coming, add a trios, give me a bi-weekly flip. One week trios, one week featherweight. And it keeps it keeps us entertained because mm. week to week, we are going to see somebody a little different. We have the main players that we're going to see week to week, and that's fine. I love all the main players. I'm okay with that. But give me that balance. So give me a trios match one week with a singles with a tag. Give me a featherweight match one week with a singles with a tag. The formula can work if you want to keep it at one hour. The formula can work. But your idea as well is not a bad idea. Whereas they could add an extra 30 minutes. Therefore highlighting the trios and the featherweight all in that 90 minutes. But at the same time, it may become oversaturated and take away from the storylines that MLW has been so great at building because they had that time. And, and yeah, trios titles, um, it's better when you have a really deep division. Like I think somebody who's probably done the best job with it is if you look at New Japan Pro Wrestling, they've got a bunch of factions. They have a very deep roster. So trios titles make sense, right? Like they, they got titles up the ass over there. So if you're going to do trios titles, you've got to give, you've got to have enough time and enough depth and you've got to have some factions to work with it. Because if you just start throwing random three people together for trios titles, Nobody's going to give a shit. Well, they, and the more they, titles they, you have they kind of made the factions where you have like the good guy luchadors in Microman and Aerostar and El Dragon. And then you've got the bad guy luchadors and, and gang grills, little mixtief house of horrors mm-hmm. faction, if you will. But think about it. Think about it. If they were to keep that kind of faction going and build around that, they could have the trios titles and the featherweight title on holiday all in that one faction. And that's a faction that has a lot of gold, therefore having a lot of power in MLW. And it's a shame that Los Parks went out the way they did because Los Parks would have fit well in that trios environment as well. So if the trios mm-hmm. is coming, and I'm not saying it is, I haven't heard anything, but all I'm saying is giving us these six man Lucha matches has been entertaining as fuck. And I don't want them to disappear, but I also want these guys to be working for something. Yeah. So- here's a pro tip kids. Don't go into business for yourself. Yes. Yes, that's true. And if you don't know what Rob's talking about, hit up our previous episodes. Cause we do talk, quite in depth a lot about uh Los Parks and what they did behind the behind the scenes and how they they just they left a lot of bad blood out there which is going to take a lot of mending uh with the MLW roster and management alone but uh I think that wraps it up for this week so let us know your thoughts about what we said about the trios division what we said about the uh featherweight division and when we'll get it back and also everything that is great from the cloud couple not the retarded nickname that Rob came up with holitude is not a thing it's not no we don't use that we don't use the R word, George. Okay, but you know what I meant. Okay, it's it's it's. I know it's the stupidest name in the world. It's your brilliant. your name for them is stupid. It is amazing. No, it sounds like it. Like I said the first time I heard it, holiday farting. It makes no sense to me. Okay. Uh, if holiday wants to blow holitudes, that's his problem. But I think as a nickname, that's that's a brilliant name for them. Then why didn't they come out with that nickname themselves? They probably thought of it and said it sounded stupid, just like I did. Cloud couple no, they, makes a lot more sense. They probably thought of it and was like, this is too creative. We need to go something like a little simpler. Yeah. All right, guys, all the socials are in the links below. I'm not going to give this man any fucking more time to speak. Uh, peace, love, and wrestling. Subscribe if you like. I'm George McKay, the host. He's Uncle Bobby B. I'm not even going to let him say goodbye. I'm going to end the recording now. Peace, love, and wrestling. We'll see you guys next time. They can't even see you waving. As long as I keep talking, they can't see you. Peace out, guys. <laughs>